seek out the glory hole and dive in. I fear that in this game we are finally approaching the near impossible levels, which can take up to a few hours to actually figure out. And as I'm sure you all know, the worst impossible puzzle is always the glory hole. Okay, I think this is not gonna be pretty, but on the bright side I don't think we've had the chance to kill people in a long time, so let's see what's gonna happen. So this manager just has a simple note that says, looking for something, seek out the glory hole <laughs> and dive in. Okay, so one of the holes in this room is our goal. Each data cube on the floor indicates its distance, measured in tiles, away from the special hole. Seek out the glory hole and dive in. Alright, so this is gonna be quite interesting. My first thought was that this is a minesweeper, but my second thought, I'm basically realizing that you're supposed to step on any data cube, look around and go towards the one with lower number. So that's actually quite easy. The exception being these ones. So if you don't see a cube next to you which is of a lower value, so in this case it would be zero, you just jump to the hole. So this here should be our glory hole. So let's just write a very simple code that's gonna look at the numbers around each person. That's gonna be for each direction, all the way around you. You're gonna store that thing in memory one. At the start, wherever you're standing, you probably want to set in memory one or memory two, the value of the data cube you are standing on currently. No, you're not. Forget that. We'll get that later. <laughs> so let's say if memory one, so any of the data cubes, is lower than what you're currently standing on. So let's say this, what you're standing on. But that's not going to work at the start because they are basically standing on a zero. So that's why I wanted to have in memory one something large. So let's go with 99. Here we're going to compare to memory one and the data cubes around you are going to be stored in memory two. So if the data cube that's next to you is lower than what you have in memory one, you basically want to step there. So I'd say step to memory two, then set memory one, which is going to be your current value to memory two. So remember what you're standing on basically, and then you're going to jump there and try again. Now, that means every time they don't even complete the full circle, but they should at some point step away. And this is gonna work. So after this all finishes, they would all be standing on these ones. So let's say that you actually haven't found a number around you which is lower than your current one. That means you are on these ones, and that also means you need to step into this hole. So you have to find it first. We could either find it here, so if the memory one is a hole, you remember it in case you want to jump into it later. But that's going to be really slow because they would have to remember all the holes at each of these spots around the map. So let's just do again for each direction. This time we know they are standing on A1. Sure, store it in memory three and just say if memory three is a hole, you step in memory three. Simple as that. I truly believe this should work and then we might have too many commands for the optional size challenge which tells us to complete the level in as few commands as possible. So we're gonna ditch this and simply put an if statement here. But I see that these are only three commands and the if statement and set and step would basically be three commands as well. So I think this is gonna work. Everyone is just slowly walking towards the ones they are already stepping into the hole. So unless I understood the assignment wrong, they should all complete the level just fine. Last person, was it the glory hole? It was. All right, completed in 14 seconds, but we do need to ditch two commands. I'm actually quite happy with that. So I'm gonna try and rewrite the way I said before. So ditch this part. And here we're just going to remember a glory hole. <laughs> so if memory two is a hole, you're going to remember it. So set in memory three, memory two. That's it. And at the end, you would step to memory three. 
So as you see, that's still three commands and it should, yeah, it runs, but it should be slower and it is. Not by much, but it is. So ditch that, we have the same code as before and now somehow we need to strip this of two commands. Oh, I know, I know. We could say nearest data queue in memory one and say step to nearest data queue. Then we can actually not initialize memory one as 99 and here indeed compare with the item you're standing on. Because at this point, they're all gonna be standing on a data queue. So no need to set memory one there. That's still nine commands, isn't it? Oh well, does it work at least? Well, it's quite slow, right? Wow, 50 seconds, okay. I guess that since they have to look at the ground each time that takes longer, they didn't expect that at all. My guess is I just need to, you know, put those two for each directions together. So could we say here, if you are standing on a one and memory two, so the, you know, item around you somewhere is a hole, step there and ditch this, which means now it's only two commands instead of three. That could work. Let's see. That's still too many. Yeah, yeah. One over. Taking too long. So I might just as well put the original idea with the memory one back in place. So memory one is 99. If it's larger than memory one. So I will have to do it like this, which is much faster. I think it's not. How come it's slow suddenly? <laughs> well, never mind that. But... What if we step to memory one every time? So let's say memory one is gonna be the nearest data cube there, don't set. And here we're just gonna step to the nearest data cube every time. I mean, not every time, the first time. Step to memory one. Then we look at the directions and instead of stepping, we're gonna set memory one and then we're gonna jump there anyway and step there. So here, instead of stepping to memory two, we're gonna say set in memory one what's in memory two. So look at all the directions. If memory two is smaller than where you're standing on, memory one is memory two, jump and step. All right, otherwise that should work. Eight commands, still one over but it might be a step in the right direction. Now I like these ends, where you can basically put two if statements together. Is there a way to do this with this stuff? So I don't think there is. Could I say if memory two is lower than where you're standing on, or you are currently standing on a one and memory two is a hole? And we're not gonna need this. But I don't think this is gonna work. Okay, they all messed up again. I think this is the way. I just need to do it differently. So I think that they always need memory 2 to be a whole. I just need brackets around this statement. How the shit am I supposed to do that? What I could technically also do is always set memory 2 in memory 1. So prepare to step there, but only actually step there once you do this jump. The same thing I can do here. So only jump away if this is true. Should also work. Yeah, yeah, works beautifully. But it's again still eight statements. But I'm at this point doing anything to the code that I can, you know, cleanups and refactoring to help me figure out how to, you know, remove a command. And now you can really see these two if statements are begging to be put together. Or could I do like three ors? I can't do three ors. Like or memory two is a hole. Because then they would just jump in a hole. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, all that. That's it. Well, at least they died. Funny. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have done it. I'm gonna remove this and try to explain what I've done. I've basically said when is the possibility that you should step? That is, if memory 2 is smaller than where you're standing, or memory 2 is a hole. 
So in these two situations, you might want to step there. Obviously, always step if it's lower, but only step in the hole if you're standing on A1. So let's now take this case and make it a little more specific. So if you are standing on A1, you sure want to step because that's this case, that memory 2 is a hole, or again, memory 2 is lower, then you jump. So basically, memory 2 lower is twice here, which is a little dumb, but it does remove a command and should still work. Yeah, 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 it's working, all right. Let me see that. Great, level done, and that's seven out of seven commands. 62 seconds, don't care about that, because we've completed the speed challenge before anyway. So that's it, guys. This is the, I believe, easiest way to find a glory hole. All you need to do is follow a simple set of instructions to get there. And remember, have fun.